Hey everyone, it's Maddie. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. And before I begin today's video talking about kidney health um, and urine screenings for um, your kidneys and the health of when it realm and, and its particular relationship to type 1 diabetes, I wanted to say that unfortunately the person who I chose for my uh, YouTube winner here uh, did not respond to me in the adequate amount of time. Um, and because I've been busy with dental hygiene school, I just haven't had a chance to redraw a new winner. Um, so I've got you six now instead of seven. I've got you down to six people that had uh, successfully completed my entries for my YouTube giveaway. And I'm going to go ahead and choose the new winner now. And this new winner will have 48 hours to contact me. This video should be going up uh, September 8th, 2019. Um, and this person will have until September 10th to contact me so that I can get their address. Um, I did notify the Instagram winner to not panic um, if she has not seen her uh, vial safe insulin vial protector in the mail yet just because of the fact I haven't had a chance to pick a new winner for YouTube and I was just going to mail them out altogether. So I have uh, six of you here. I have six of you here that are going to be entered into the giveaway and you can see your names right there. And you're just going to be numbered one through six. And I'm going to go ahead and go to a random generator and select the winner. So I have here one through six. I'm going to hit generate. And it chose winner number four. So congratulations, Alex Stephenson. You are my new YouTube winner. You did provide uh, a way for me to contact you. So I will be contacting you after this video posts and go li goes live on my YouTube channel here today. You will get a winner uh, notification, uh, a winner winner receiver message letting you know that you did win and then you can provide me with your uh, best shipping address. So congratulations, Alex, and um, thank you for your support and I hope to be doing another giveaway very soon. So with that being said, let's jump into the topic of today's video. Today's video is just going to be very basic talking about uh, urolysis screenings and urine screenings that you typically get as a type 1 diabetic every year to really test how well your kidneys are filtering out the toxins out of your bloodstream. As many of you know, your kidney health is extremely important in the realms of type 1 diabetes because high blood glucose levels over a long period of time will damage the little filtration units that sit inside your kidneys. Your kidneys are two bean-shaped organs that sit kind of like this and they're located, you know, if you know where your rib cage is and you can feel the lower part of your rib cage around your back, that's kind of where they sit. They sit kind of like right nestled into like the lower middle third of your back. Um, they're kind of sitting there and from there the kidneys have ureters that connect them to the bladder and the bladder holds your urine. And then when you uh, have the urge to urinate or expel that urine, you do flush the urine out of your urethra. So uh, urine is basically a component of a lot of water and has some protein in it. And it's basically a waste product that we make um, after nutrient digestion to anything that happens when we're rebuilding our own tissues. Any kind of waste product that's generated from these cells, biologic waste products, gets flushed out through your kidneys and they're supposed to filter any toxins and or waste that come uh, from your bloodstream. So as a type 1 diabetic, they really want to watch this closely because high blood glucose levels over a long period of time will damage these little filtration units that do this filtering of the toxic uh, elements in your bloodstream. So if you have damage to your kidneys, you're not going to be filtering out as much of the toxic stuff, but instead you will pass out a lot of non-toxic stuff that your body needs like albumin and microalbumin, which are huge uh, major type proteins that your body uses to build up cells, build up um, your tissues, and to keep your um, whole entire body in good working condition. So every year, typically, uh, at least for me, I pee in a cup and it gets sent off to test my uh, albumin or microalbumin to creatinine ratio. Uh, creatinine is a waste product, so that number should be elevated in your urine because you don't want a buildup of creatinine in your bloodstream. And the microalbumin or albumin level should be on the lower, zero to lower side because you don't want your kidneys filtering out excess amounts of uh, protein in your urine. When I was first diagnosed in diabetic ketoacidosis, um, I was filtering tons of protein out of my urine. I don't know if you guys saw it. I think I posted it a long time ago when I was talking about pH levels um, and stuff like that. I don't remember what test results I was showing you, but I think I did show you I was passing out quite a bit of protein in my urine. 
which is not good. It's very, very damaging on your kidneys. Um, not good for your health of uh, your whole entire body. But I'm going to go ahead, pop onto my medical chart here, and I will screenshot a picture of what my last test results looked like when I had my urine checked about a year ago, and I'm assuming I'd have to have it checked again. Um, I will make a side note, ladies, do not take a urine test on your period. Not a good idea because it can give you false results, um, because blood can and menstrual fluid can contain some proteins from shedding from the endometrium lining of the uterus. Please don't take a urine sample um, during that time because that can screw with your results and make it look like your kidneys are like having damage or your kidney filtration isn't where it should be even though it is where it is. So I had to do this last time. I just waited a few days and I took it at home and then I took it back in a little um, cooler bag and sent it back to the uh, doctor's office because I didn't take it right there because I had to tell the lab tech, you know, I'm on my period. I probably really shouldn't be taking this test. She said, you're right. Here's the cup when you're off your period, take your test and bring it back in when you're ready. So, like I said, the microalbumin to creatinine ratios should be on the low side. I believe the value that you should be looking at should be anything less than um, 30 for your ratio, which means that in order to get a number less than 30, to get a number less than 30, you should have a very low microalbumin spillage and a high creatinine spillage. And you can see on mine here, my microalbumin level was 5.7 milligrams per liter. My creatinine was 155.2 milligrams per deciliter, meaning that if you take 5.7 and divide it by 155 here, you would get 3.7 milligrams per gram. And your standard range is less than 30. Um, and if you are greater than 30, it probably means that you're not filtering out the appropriate things out of your bloodstream and that your kidneys could have uh, some damage to them. Another important thing to look at, um, especially like when I was in the hospitals, not only your albumin, semiquant, but is your glomular filtration rate or your estimated glomular filtration rate, your, your GFR. If that GFR level is below 90, it means that your kidneys aren't really filtering out all the products that they should be or they're not up to their full function. When I was first diagnosed, my uh, uh, glomular filtration rate was starting to drop into the 70s, which is getting to the point where it's not like extreme kidney failure, but it's to the point where if I would have waited any longer, I could have done some severe kidney damage. And it's something that you don't want happening to you. But thank God, about four hours after I was being treated for a diabetic ketoacidosis with insulin and tons of fluids, my glomular filtration rate went back greater than 90. So that means that my filtration rates in my kidneys were functioning enough for me to filter out all my toxins and my waste. So this is very important that you have this screen. Do not do it on a period. Um, if you're a lady, um, you can get false results. Um, but just get this tested if you don't already get this tested for because it's just a very basic screen to see, hey, is she have kidney problems or is her kidneys functioning fine? Um, because your urine can tell you a lot. It's amazing what, you know, your urine and your stool can tell you a lot about your health, just like your mouth can tell you a lot about your health, the color of your skin, the color of your eyes. Um, all different things can really give you a good gauge of where your health is in the moment. So... Get this done if you absolutely uh, can. I would assume most insurance companies do cover this for diabetics because it would be considered preventative medicine. And if your glomular filtration rate would be above 30, they would probably send you to a nephrologist or a kidney specialist to see if there's any medications or anything they can do to try to stop uh, your kidneys from passing too much of the albumin out of your uh out of your bloodstream. That's one that you want to retain in. The creatinine needs to come out. And when you build up too much creatinine, and you don't have enough albumin, it causes a change in your blood chemistry, kind of like diabetic ketoacidosis and can cause uh, tons of damage. So uh, this video is very, very short, but I wanted to make this um, just to let you know that your kidney health is extremely important. So take good care of your blood sugars to avoid stressing them out. Um, as another side note, your kidneys really do not like blood sugars above 160. If you um, continuously have blood sugars higher than 160 for long, 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 long periods of time, you probably will be passing glucose out into your urine. And you may notice your urine may be more sticky or whatever the case may be. Um, I personally haven't noticed a ton of this since I was diagnosed, but just keep that in mind that your kidneys don't like blood sugars above 160 for a long period of time. Um, and if you're like me, treat every high blood sugar as if it's doing damage to one part of your body or another. Even though it probably isn't in a temporary short period of time, 
As a matter of fact, it probably isn't. But if you keep that in the back of your head, knowing that high blood sugars do damage and that get them down as quickly as possible to avoid putting stress on your kidneys, putting stress on your heart and on your eyes, um, and of course on your nerves, that you're going to be in a pretty good condition and you're not going to have um, diabetic complications. Because if you are not properly filtering out the waste out of your kidneys, you will have to go on what is called dialysis, in which you will be hooked up to a machine that basically filters the toxins out of your blood for you. And I know that's a very arduous and a very, very excruciating process that I've seen a few of you go through, especially on Instagram. Nick Gets Real is a really good example. Um, she went through dialysis after having diabetes complications for a while and bless her heart, she finally got a kidney pancreas transplant and she is no longer diabetic and she's no longer having to be on dialysis. Um, but she encourages everybody to just take care of your blood sugars. Don't ignore your high blood sugars. Don't let them go rogue. Don't let them run around. Be mindful of your body. Be mindful of that diabetic complications can happen. And if she could undo the clock, she definitely would. So, um, go see her. She's very inspiring. And I really love how she's putting light into the pancreas transplant world and how much it's helped her. But at the same time, it's not a fully functioning thing because she has to take anti-rejection pills at any time or her uh, body could reject her own organs and um, whatever the case may be. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care of your kidneys. Um, get your urine checked. Um, that's the main thing with uh, anything with a type 1 diabetic. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up. Feel free to hit that subscribe button down below. I post videos every single week about diabetes plus more. And Alex Stephenson, I will be contacting you very, very shortly here after this video goes up for you to give me your shipping address so that I can send you your vial safe. So um, I hope to be doing another giveaway very, very soon. I'm thinking maybe when I hit 500 subscribers, I'm trying to do something to celebrate 400 subscribers, but I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Maybe I'll do another Q&A. Maybe I'll do something uh, more personal to me to maybe open up a little more to you guys about what I do beyond being like a dental hygiene student, beyond being a YouTuber. Maybe you get to sneak peek a little more into my life. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do, but whatever I do, I'm sure it'll be enjoyable for you guys to watch. So um, again, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you'd like and stay tuned next week for more videos. So take care. God bless. Be kind, spread positivity and be thankful. And I love you all so much. Have a fantastic rest of your Sunday and I will see you all very soon. Bye. Everyone.